Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Tundkind 12 FPS in the farm. My name is Mala Sorte, and I am here with uh, Wino uh, with Winona. Hi, Winona. Hello. For this, lo for this lovely uh, 12 FPS title, the seeds you sow. Indeed. Tell me, Winona, who are you playing today? I am playing Mad Lad, the curious little kid who likes to get into trouble, along with his new beetle partner, Red, his toon beetle partner that he just found at the farm, it just popped out of the ground, and he's like, you know, this is now mine. <laughs> well, you know how it is, you are just minding your own business in the farm, and then suddenly, hi, I am a baby. <laughs> To get the baby beetle. Um, tell me, Winona, where is Mad Lad right now? Mad Lad is on the farm, and I would think this is early on the farm, be because before he does any of his shenanigans, he wants to get his chores done. He wants to make sure the beetles are all fed and clean. clean. He wants to make sure home is very much cleaned up and all stocked full of food make sure to throw out anything that is rotten and everything just the basic chores for the morning lovely <laughs> being oh, I adore this child I'm sorry no Just it's okay being, uh, he, I'm actually not apologizing I, I adore your character he's keeping very very busy I see Yes. He's, he likes to try to be responsible with this place because Carminia is not ho back home yet. He he knows she's coming. She He just does not know when. He's like, you know, I want to try to keep this place nice for when she comes back home. Oh. Um, as he says, and um, as he's, as you say that, as he thinks that uh, the I would say that Madlad in the farm working ha might have seen a few times. You know, sometimes when you have something in mind, you tend to perceive that certain thing more. Uh, mm -hmm. If Madlad is thinking about Carminia when she might drop by. Um, he will start noticing that sometimes, just right at the corner of his eye, there is a rustle, 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 rustle of, sleeve, of leaves, or some kind of like humanoid shadow. Mm -hmm. When he turns around, there is nobody in there. Yeah, and every time that happens, he's just like he perks up a little bit, and then he's like, oh, and it isn't her, or it's just something else. He's because he's he's, he's he wants he he wants his grandma back. Today is not different. Mm -hmm. Um, can you tell me what's Matt Lad's passive perception? Uh, his passive perception is a sixteen. And um, what is Red's passive perception? Uh, let me double check that. Uh, la di da di da, I need to get to his stat block. Red's is a. Okay, how do you. How do you calculate that? My mind is. My mind is not. Is not totally back home yet. No, wait, it's <laughs> that and that. Yes, it's a it's a twelve. Red is a twelve. Uh, Red doesn't realize, but just it's, it's like it takes Matt Lad a second to realize there is uh, this kind of like humanoid shadow behind the tree, obscured. Uh, again. As he's thinking of Carminia, he picks up on that. Yeah, and he 
and see, he sees that, and he stops what, whatever he's doing, and looks over and says, Carminia? There is, again, a movement, and the shadow disappears again, like Matlat can hear steps uh, moving uh, away from away from him, and a very loud thud against the floor, uh, against the floor, his floor, and a shit, and more steps. Yeah, that that's gonna say that's gonna drive Mad Lad's curiosity to get on red and follow whatever that was. All right, you are in pursuit. I he is in pursuit. Um, I will need if you're riding reds. Uh, I will need what's uh, reds uh, reds speed. Red speed is 40 feet. Oh, yeah. Um, is, is red dashing? Yeah, red probably be dashing. All right. Uh, you absolutely overcome this shadow that is fast, is running. Uh, it's right. It's fast, but not faster enough than like um, than your uh, beetle. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I would say that Matlat is able to not go right behind it, but just cut this person off right in front of them. And he probably does instruct instruct Red to do that, to cut them off. Because he's like, okay, not very sure who this is, but I want to make sure it's not a threat. It is a staple of all narrative, uh, histo- of narrative foils and stuff, or however you, you call it is. It's a hooded figure that stops on its tracks, clearly surprised. Ooh. Put it figure. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> it's just fairly um medium ha- medium height uh height. I cannot pronounce things today. It's okay. Uh, medium tallness. <laughs> <laughs> you had it right, and... it was height. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Me- medium height hi- height um and it's just a okay, cape. There is no discernible features on it, and it just takes a step back, um, clearly trying to get away from you. Hey, I'm not gonna hurt you or anything. I was just curious. Who are you? Uh, none of your business. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're the one who was stalking the farm. Me? No, I am not stalking the farm. I'm just having a little walk around the forest. And yet you're yes. watching me from the farm. Now, don't make it weird, kid. I'm not making it weird. You're making it weird by dodging the question. You are making it weird, but making me making it weird by dodging the question. No, I, I just want to know who you are and why you're here. Well, you said you're walking, but at least ask, I at least want to know who you are. Well, I don't know who you are. There is, not, there is not supposed to be people here. Bad lad looks at the farm. Well, there's plenty of people here. I realize. Yeah. I would like to know what are you doing in a property that is not yours. I am taking care of said property until the rightful owner comes back. Who gave you permission for that? <laughs> she's, she's my grandma. I say I didn't need permission. 
the haunted figure from the ropes, kind of like under the cape, kind of like, you know, one of these flip notes comes out and starts flipping pages. Um, I go like, Gamma, Gamma, Gamma. Uh, Who are you, a cop? Uh, I cannot disclose that just yet, Gamma, Gamma. Yeah. Kid, there is no Gamma in here. There's a Carminia, who I call Grandma. Uh, Carminia, that's what's the... Uh... Yeah, um, there is a register of a few squatters a few years ago. Are you with them? No, I'm not squatting. That's Carminia's farm. If you want to go for squatters, there was a place, uh, say, there was a place over that way. And he points to the relative areas where he found that one house. Um, well, I mean, they are not paying me to go check over there, but I will keep it in mind, maybe. Um, say, what are you being well, paid for, um, then? Just keep it an eye on the place. Um, there is... People interested around here buying this uh, this land, so you know I'm just like just a legal representative of who representative of who and he is his eyes squint and as he just looks at him. You know I'm not supposed to disclose that. Come on, just just. Sure, sure. Mad lad just stares at the guy not moving. Kid, I don't like how you are looking at me. Yeah. Listen, is fine. I'm not here to cause trouble. I'm just, you know, picking up some information for the office. That's it. And I have told you enough. The office? So you work for a company? Well, I work for somebody. I mean, everyone. I mean, fair enough. But there's this one company who has been doing construction lately, uh, say, around here. You wouldn't have to be with them, would you? Or at least by, or at least hired by them. Um, I mean, maybe, probably not. <laughs> the place is the place is uh, place is uh, prime real estate. People are interested. There is uh, plenty of people who have been holding onto the reins here that now are looking to sell. Well, you can't sell that air piece of land. He points back to Carmina's farm. Carmenia is, has is say is going to be back relatively soon. Is say if you want to talk to her about selling the land, do it then. But for right now, this is say work is say she ain't selling nothing. Oh, so um, that is actually like so we're living here. The Michael, okay, uh, and he notebook disappears and on its place. Yeah, well, there's... I have a summons for her over here, if you don't mind. Uh, the name is uh, Car... Carminia. Car 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 Carminia. Car um, Car Carmen. Car Carmen. Carminia. Carmen. Close, um, Close is, enough. Is... But yeah, yeah, she yeah, lives yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, she lives... She's li still trying to pronounce it. <laughs> Yeah, let's just side. Yeah, she lives there, but she's on vacation right now. She's going to be coming back soon, so just be patient if you want to talk to her. There's other people at the, there are other oh, farm yeah. hands at, that have been working the farm too, so. Uh, probably, probably I won't be the one talking with her, but uh, here. This is a summons for her, and he extends you a letter. 
very official looking pristine a square of paper with a blossomed thingy <laughs> and everything. Mad Lad looks at the letter and slowly takes it. Our... Right, kid, it's your, it's your problem now. Our... Nice to meet you. But he tries to go to go. Mad Lad doesn't let's say Mad Lad doesn't chase after him, but it does he does look at the letter. He does examine the letter. It is addressed to um the person on the property and that that's it yeah, the address is the um it's a uh, court in Tuntam. court mm. my lad puts this in his hammer space i don't like where this is going but i say I can't do anything right now he sighs. <sighs> Carmenia, please be back soon. Right in front of you, the guy appears again from some bushes. Oh, and can you sign here to confirm that you have gotten the letter? Ah! <laughs> Mad Lad! Just say, <laughs> let's see how bad Mad Lad is spooked. What's your whiz boy? Uh, yeah. Wait, I, that's the wrong. That's the wrong thing. Okay, he isn't that spook. He jumps a little. He's just like, huh? And say, but looks at him. All right, I'll sign. <laughs> and he, he takes it. Whatever. What is it? What is he? Is he? He signing. Uh, he's signing, signing on a uh, receipt. Yeah, he signs the receipt. He does it like in a squiggle. It... Great. Uh, he hands to Matlad a pink square uh, that will be like the copy of it, and he keeps the original. Alright. Thank you very much. Bye. Uh... Bye. <laughs> okay, he leaves. Mad Lad. <laughs> Mad Lad sighs again. <sighs> he puts a receipt in his pocket, too. Alright. That's something I'm gonna worry about a little bit later. He then looks around the forest. Okay. I'll be right back. I just need to finish feeding the stag beetles, but I'll be right back, forest. Unless... You want to try, unless you want to commune with me now. He's just like, opens his arms, <laughs> waiting for response, if any. Um, roll me, um, roll me something to dodge, I will say. Uh, that'd probably be dex. Dexterity. Oh, he, he's rolling well. That's an 18. Nice. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, you are not hit by a random uh, random chestnut that just fell from the from the from somewhere out, from somewhere. <laughs> Mad lad looks down looks down at the chestnut, then looks up at the forest. I you don't. You will. Mad lad will yeah. notice that. There are not chest that there is no chestnut trees in this area. Huh. Mad Lad actually is curious by that as he take as he picks up the chestnut. Alright. Fair enough. He takes the chestnut and holds it in his hand as he rides back to the farm really quickly to finish up his chores. Um, as you follow the same path you have traveled, um, you arrive to a river. Mad Lad looks at this river. All right, we're doing this now, I guess. <laughs> as Mad Lad gets off red. <laughs> and he goes over to the river. Like, 
how fresh is the river? Is this like a spring ri river that he could drink, or is this just this is just a nice little river? It is. Um, wait, let me Google what you just said. Is it a creek? Uh, I think it's uh, <laughs> me using Google Google Images to see the difference between a creek and a spring river. Yeah, I would say say it's more like a creek. Yes, it's a, a big one. It's a big one. It's actually um, there is a lot of water at the moment because it has been raining. Mm-hmm. But it is uh, your typical Stony Creek. Does the water look fresh enough to drink safely? Um, would you like to roll nature on that? Yeah. Is that a three or a two? That's a two, okay. All right, 18. Um, with an 18, you realize that it looks clean, but you should proceed with caution. That's fair. Mad Lad, uh, say, at least, uh, say, does nudge over the red. They say, you want to take a drink? They say, you want a drink, buddy? And Red does do a little tr little happy bug noise as they drink from the river. And Mad Lad takes a small, does take a handful of water and just take a si takes a sip himself. It has a bitter aftertaste. That's fair. But it doesn't seem to affect you in any immediate way. Again, fair enough. As Mad Lad just sits down, at the, say, sits down at this little creek. All right then. I guess you're telling me to just commune with nature. Got some creek water in me. Um. So how have you been doing, Forest? <laughs> Nothing. The only answer back is the birds and the wind. You know, fair enough. I am still getting used to it. Red Red does nuzzle him to try to cheer him up. <laughs> uh, it's all right, Red. I say, did think it'd be the first time we'd be getting in the first time. Though I know you are, you have some sentience for us. I'm on to you. Easy points a finger up in the for to the trees. The top of the tree just wave back. Nothing out of the ordinary as there is a certain amount of wind today. Mm. Bad land nods. Right. Um, hmm. What, where should we go next, Red? Um, you know, there was that sort of, like, well shrine thing with the candles that we saw in that one part, that one adventure we went to. Maybe that's a good, that's a good place to stop next. What do you think? Red gives a little chirp in agreement. All right, let's get going. As he goes to that one little place that he was last game where the where the candles were and there was like a tiny little shrine. Uh, how does Matlab plan to go there? Does he go he try does he go back? Does he try to cross the river? Does he try to go down the river or does he try, try to go upstream? He probably goes the shortest way to the location. If it in if he doesn't have to cross the river, he won't. Though he will if he has to. All right. 
Um, so are you telling me that he tries to orientate himself? Yeah, he tries to orientate oh. himself. Uh, again, draw me a nature to try to see if could you I, guess right. Could I possibly ar argue survival? Hey, absolutely, sorry, yes, absolutely. You can roll a survival on this one. All right. You should roll a survival on this one. It's okay. Very say nice. That's a seventeen. Um, logic tells you that you should probably go uh, following the river uh, downstream. And, and that's what Madlad does. But all right, as Madlad gets tries to do that. Uh, so I hope this is not taking control of... No, no, if you if take control if you need to. I am fully... Way, I am on this ride and I am excited. Red actually tries to go upstream. Huh? And Matlat gets like a really... Um, Matlat with an 18 gets the impression that it would be wise to follow the bug in this scenario. Madlad Even looks when his training tells him that the logic will be go going down the downstream. Fair enough. Red, I say, Red probably perks up his head and instead of going where his, his partner wants to, he goes the opposite way and Madlad's like, uh-uh, what's going Huh? Are you sensing suffer red? I mean, I'll trust. I say I trust you, boo. I trust. I trust you, red. As he pats red, and he is following the trust of his steed. Against all range of knowledge, <laughs> going upstream actually brings you. To the place you were trying to uh, to go, it it is peculiar because at some point, Matlat loses sight of the river but can still hear it, mm -hmm. and since he's arriving, he doesn't reach the place um, the same way he did before. He doesn't reach it. Uh, through the main the main path, mm -hmm. he cuts through he cuts through th the th uh, trees. He cuts to, through the trees through the thick of the forest, and actually arrives towards the side, mm -hmm. a little bit closer to the a little bit closer to the uh, monoliths that were there before. Uh, as he approaches, he can feel like the grass uh, under his feet is kind of like wobbly mm -hmm. as if there is water underneath huh that's cool I, and you got us there red i say and he hugs and he hugs red i guess he knew what you were doing i got to say a part to say a part of being a ranger is trusting their steed right and red just just does give a little nuzzle to his head and like licks him, <laughs> and Re and Madlad just laughs, laughs and just hugs his and hugs him back. As he then like looks over the monoliths in the shrine and the candles that are most likely unlit. One second, I am trying to. No, no, yeah. So we have. Just so we have a reference. Mm-hmm. Um... Why aren't you uh, around? Mm 
bad luck. Uh, I guess we will have to. Uh, this is the place you were trying to write, right? I was trying to write at that place with the candles, but you know this works out too because Mad Lad no, would. No, no, <laughs> never mind. No, no, this actually works out sort of well because if the person that he thinks is here is not here, he does want to try something with the those figurines. Sorry, Verona, I misunderstood, but like it's it's okay if you arrive at, at the if you arrive at the at the cabin place. Not the cabin place. There was the third option that you had with the candles in the well. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, I'm sorry, I absolutely misunderstood because I think I made a note that this player also had a candle at some point and I didn't say it. Ah. Uh. Um, yeah. Uh, God damn it, notes. Uh, listen, do you want to go to the candle place? He wants to go to the can. He wants to go to the candle place because it seemed like a. Sh if I remember correctly, it was like a shrine. Also, so he feels like that. All right. So he wants. You... To... Sorry, you got. Yeah, you arrive here and uh, red. Mm -hmm. keeps working and all of that happened like you actually cross around the thing and you just uh, cross through the back of this place uh -huh. and you can feel all of this and you keep working towards and you finally see in front of you after a little bit of working more working you finally see in front of you uh, the the place with the candles which is a crossroads yeah actually mm -hmm. There is a well to one side, and there is like the, the monolith in the middle that is kind of like uh, the middle of it, part of it has fallen uh, to the ground. Mm -hmm. and that is right in the middle of the crossroads. And mm -hmm. next, near it, between two of the roads, there is the well with the candles. You can proceed and get closer to it. There is nobody walking around. Yeah. And Mad Lad does. He gets closer to the... He does get closer to the candles and he looks at all of them and he's just... He smiles. As he then, like... He he then starts lighting the candles. Right. It is... Yeah, he does this with his magic. He does produce flame and lights each candle. Some of the candles don't light up because they have been exhausted. They have been burning for a long time and they are no longer on. The tiny ones that are honey like the tiny ones that are like fairy lights mm -hmm. light up uh -huh. with no problem. And so do some around the wheel. And Mad Lad smiles at this. As he then goes over to the monolith and has an idea. As he that he then says to Red, Hey Red, do you think you could pick up the broken half of the monolith? Let's see if we could try to put it back together. Uh, yeah, because here's my thought out of character. He Ma say he wants Red because Red's stronger, to pick up the one end of the monolith and basically put it back on top of where it originally was, and then he wants to, and Mad Lad wants to use Entangle to cover it up with vines, basically holding everything back together. Hmm. Uh, repíteme eso otra vez, la última parte me la... Uh, I mean, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Repeat the last part for me, please. You are trying to hold it together. How? Uh, with the spell entangle, which creates vines that wrap a that would wrap around the structure, basically holding it in place. All right. Um, I will need for that uh, a strength check to lift the yep. thing. A dexterity check. To keep it in place and then you can cast all right sounds good 
Mad Lad is going to say Red is going to get the strength, which is. Does Mad the, Lad. Mad Lad does help Red, so he would be giving Red the help action. Alright. So I'm just going to roll both of these at once. Ah, red. That's a that's that's a five. Red is baby. <laughs> he tries his best. He tries his best. But red's still just baby. You see this little it, what is Technically a baby, but doesn't look like a baby. It's a it's a big stag beetle. It tries as hard as it picks up this tries to pick up this one stone part of the bottle lift off the ground, and it struggles. Yeah, he, he tries to regrip his feeding, and he just yeah, he tries to pull it up, but he just can't. And Red is just then eventually just slumps down, gives a sad little sad little bug noise, and Mad Lad. Mad Lad just smiles and goes over to Red. He's like, "Hey, it's okay, Red. It's a big, heavy rock." I say, I "Say, you at least tried." And he and he hugs Red. <laughs> oh, baby. Um, in fairness, it's quite a complicated um, endeavor. Um, with just a glance. It is kind of like a very weather. Um, the rock is extremely weather. It has been like maybe decades since the last time this thing was together. Mm hmm. Yeah, but even even so, Madeline wanted to try to put it back to respect to say to respect what the shrine that was. Say that was probably in use here, and he does like then sit because he can't unfortunately do he can't unfortunately fix the rock, but he at least does get on his he, he does get on his knees and just sits down and a bit of a prayer. He just sends out a prayer to the forest, like sorry, asking him to say for guys and help and health and. Well, just also, yeah, pretty much, like, he's, like, asking the, for, like, repaying respects to the forest and the spirit, and also asking it for help, because he's like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, so please get me a sign. Um... Oh, my blood, baby. Um, do you want to try again? Lift the big rock? Yeah. Red will probably try again. It takes a little bit of time. Um, but you wait and listen. A guy with a donkey just walks by and Candlefly waves at you. Is one of the neighbors, and he Ma just keeps working. Mm -hmm. Sorry, does Matla try to speak with him? He he does give a little wave before going back to prayer. He kind of like looks at you, kind of like kids these days, <laughs> but probably. Um. Um. Yeah. Um, there is no answer. Isn't that a little bit frustrating? Yeah. It is a bit frustrating to Mad Lad as he like sort of sit as he like sits back down more of his bum. But he then just sighs, just like, well, never to say never to say this would be easy. Mom already said we have to be patient no matter what we're doing or learning. Mad Lad is saying Red comes over to him and is a laces head head in his lap. 
I know that, say, I know that I'm not going to go anywhere without you, Red. So, you're, say, so we just have to be patient. And say, well, f say, we're going to figure this out together. As he just, like, does give scratches to Red. All right. Quas Matlab next step. Bad lad. If, if he if he tries to do this again, he needs again to roll a strength and dexterity. Yeah, Mad Lad is not gonna actually do it again. He's just gonna leave the stone lying right now. He's just like it's been there for centuries. Is a is a he is a he knows he can't really do anything, but at the same time, that sort of nature is like the cycle of life and death, and even for like such as like like strives like this, they can't they can't be together forever. As he just does give a pat to the shrine, and he then gets back on red to walk off into the forest. Just as you are gonna do it. Um, a chestnut hits you uh, in the in the back of the head. Ow! What the? Mad lad turns around <laughs> and and see who's like who did that. Uh, nobody did that. He just you know, he sees is... nothing. He just sees a chestnut. Uh, just a chestnut hit uh, hit you. On the back of the of the head, and as you turn around, uh, you see the general direction must have been one of those. Uh, you know, there is uh, four paths. Mm -hmm. It would have been one of them. Hmm. It's the one that goes. Uh, it's the one that goes to the north. All right. If the chestnut is leaving, leading him to the north path. He will. He will follow nature. As it literally hits him in the head to smack him to go say that way. <laughs> and he picks up the chestnut as he then heads up the north path. You follow the north path. You see a few times um Tell me, do you follow it? Yes. Uh, 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 you see a few signs. Uh -huh. One points to the train station. Another one points to the tavern. There is a cluster of chestnuts uh, in uh, to your uh, in front of you, kind of to your left. Is the left towards the train station? You know that it's in the general direction, but it wouldn't be as straight. Like, it's not exactly the train station. It's kind of like closer to that than to the tavern, but yeah. Yeah, even... The train... Yeah. I mean, he would follow the chestnuts. He, I'm just making sure he knows where he's... The general direction he's going. He's like, okay, is it towards the train station or is it towards the tavern? If it's towards the train station, he's going to just basically follow the chestnuts. Or at least the general directions where the chestnuts are going. Uh, you ride towards the chest, the cluster of trees, the chestnuts trees. Mm -hmm. That is, Is that correct? Yes. you actually reach them and the forest doesn't change around you uh, it feels like a very specific cluster a little bit isolated from the other trees but this is still dense as it almost feels like you're walking into a building as you cross the first ones. Hmm. I see. Mad Lad would step into this area and probably make a perception check to see what's up. All right. Give me your best. I will try. 
Yeah, back to nice numbers. That's a 19. All right, uh, fuck the mystery out of the window with a 19. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as you, it is not an extremely big space. Like, it's enough for you to kind of look, to, you know, to side to side and kind of cover the most of it. Uh, there is a different texture in this area as, like, usually the forest feels kind of like the style of it is... Mm -hmm. Um, you might have heard some of the neighbors refer to it as melancholic. It's watercolory, uh, losing details. Uh, the the further uh, you try to look through the through the trees, through the sky, this one it is kind of like vague. Matlab feels more the shapes, the colors, and the sun than outright seeing it. It's kind of like dreamlike mm -hmm. in the way that you, when you walk through it, you need to give up looking into the small details to actually perceive those. Um, right in front of you, under a perfectly placed uh, the ray of sun, so to speak, there is kind of like a humanoid figure, if it wasn't because it's made of wood. A sprawled lion in the ground, back towards one of these chestnuts, uh, chestnut trees in a way that you don't exactly know where the tree starts mm -hmm. and the figure starts, ends. Hmm. Where the tree ends and the figure starts. Yeah. Thank you. No, you're fine. Yeah, and that lie is just now curious as he takes a deep breath as he sort of notices like, yeah, some of our dream lights just need to let, say, just let things be as they are. And he takes a deep breath and then slowly releases it and walks towards this figure. Or it um, looks to be a the, figure. <laughs> the f uh, still riding that 19 as the more you get closer to it. Uh, it is quite a tall fellow with no um with no specific, um, it's almost like a, a skeleton with a face. There mm -hmm. is not a specific uh, anything that will say like, oh, one or other gender. Mm -hmm. It does have a face, but is not moving. Um, hello? There is no answer. Hmm. Mad Lad looks around, looks up at the chestnut tree, looks at the figure. Hmm. Right, I don't this, know. Sorry, you this go? Close, this close, you can see that what will it be? Its rib cage is kind of like open. Ribs open. Everything is wooden, and there is a few details that might look like a stone embedded into a wood that has grown around it. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, like its chest, its uh, ribcage is kind of like open, almost like if it's mimicking, uh, is mimicking a flower or even. Uh, one of these fly trap, tra uh, fly trap plants. Hmm. Um, I mean, Mad Lad would be curious and probably make an investigation to look into the rib cage to see what else he can see. Uh, for this one, you can roll investigation. You can roll also nature if you wish. All right. <laughs> They're both the same stat. <laughs> Do it for flavor, then. Probably he 
probably go with more nature. Did you? Because this is definitely nature vibes. Alright, it's a 12. With a 12, you see that part of the cavity is kind of like if it's half buried underground and there is like um, there is moved a dirt inside of it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with a 12, you have this strange uh, idea like this is like this, this has been prepared. This dirt over here has been prepared. It looks almost when um, you guys are working back at the farm and you are just kind of like, well, time to move this, to mix this, to put this. You know, it's fluffy. It's wet. It has that smell of like when you... Um, <laughs> when you put the... What's the name in English? God damn it. The feed for the plants. Yeah. Okay. Compost. Compost, yes. Mad Lad looks at this. It's just like this this prime and ready dirt and soil. And as a out of curiosity, he takes out one of the one of the walnuts that has dropped on his head and Decides to go into the rib cage and use the dirt to plant the seed. It is like in a matter of seconds, this thing sprouts in a green, in a green and um, green and golden glow. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that the light comes that comes out of it? It feels like the sun in your face. And then as fast as he does that, it just kind of like crumbles into itself. Mad Lad looks more confused than anything as he like looks at what's left of this crumbled mess. Sorte? Uh, yeah. Baby is confused. Um, yeah, yeah. He he make he looks into the pile like he's like, yeah. okay, this thing sprouted magical light, and now it's all crumbled to the ground. It's like, is there anything left? Um, compost. Hmm. I say Mad Lad does like sift through the compost, wondering where that seed went. You, as you did, you kind of like keep the, and you know, there is kind of like, it is strange, but there is kind of like, uh, you keep digging, and there is kind of like a concap thing. Con Ah, uh, look in the gallery, please. It... Concave, yeah. Concave thing, as if to hold something. The shape is a slightly almond-shaped. Um, and it's kind of like place where a heart will be on a humanoid. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me, where is Mad Lad's, um, camera space? Mad, uh, say, Mad Lad has, say, in his hammer space, the, say, the designer seeds as, say, he can, like, sift, he can, like, pull them out of his hammer space. Let's see if he... But, wait, wait, where is Mad Lad's camera space? Located? It would be right now in his pocket. Red tries to start nibbling on Mad Lad's pocket. Huh? What's up, Red? What's up, Red? As Red probably like not as he as he like gets out of his pocket. Mad Lad goes into his pocket 
And, you know, let's see if he pulls out the right thing, the essay first. Yes, he does. He pulls out whatever he needs to. Yeah, you also put, pulled out a, sni a snivy. Yes, I did pull out a snivy. <laughs> All right, uh, so you pulled the seed, right? Yes. All right, what do you do with it? Madlad sort of connects the dots, A to B, and puts the seed where the concave is. So, at first, it seems that something similar is happening. The seed starts to glow in a green and a golden light, uh, but it doesn't explode and it keeps kind of like absorbing this energy. Um, the figure in the figure in front of you kind of starts shaking a little bit. It's kind of like in rattling. It's as if you see a wooden skeleton trying to get up and with a snap. Uh, the the rib cage closes. Are your hands close to this? Most likely. <laughs> All right. Uh, do, uh, roll me a uh, dexterity to get the fuck out of there. Fair enough. I think a seventeen does it. <laughs> a seventeen does it. Uh. It is, however, still quite close. Your fingers are vast about it and it closes and you can see like the energy contained and the rift cage getting up as this figure face is still impossible. Its eyes start to glow and it looks like it's about to get up and it just flops into the ground again with a dot and he twitters away as the chestnut you put before and flowers start sprouting and in the middle of it still glowing there is the seed you just put yeah and is this the part where it looks a little bit different it does look a little bit different. Do you want to put the uh, the image on chat and I will describe it? I say I will in one second because there's there's something else that I thought would be fun that would happen as Mad Lad picks up this seed that golden like that gold light like sort of sprouts out again as so is a as it catches say catches mad lad he sort of just sort of feels the need to put it on as he gets as he puts on this necklace he just feels this rush of energy and nature energy and red is sort of entranced by it too as red is a then gets closer to him and puts it is a mad sort of lifts up the necklace so it could be put is a red can it is a this little is a this little sea can be also be touched by red as they as they both been to say both glow as then as it then like settle down it then then this happens is a because <laughs> mad lad Oh my god, I forgot to put an OBS! One more second! <laughs> you think I would have the- You think I would have these- All these things, like, already lined up? Most of the time, yes. Today, I am no. Not, I am not one to judge. <laughs> <laughs> As Mad Lad, again, can I get- Yes. This- This- This needs to be precise a little bit. E. There we go, Mad Lad gets a little- design trades as he looks down at the seed 
which has partially spr- has sprouted where there the where it's like thin white roots has curled around the seed forming a sort of knot of sorts as the greenery has sprouted on top into like it branches off but yet still makes a loop as a necklace as there are already little leaves on it but also is now a necklace that hangs around Mad Lad's same neck as Mad Lad rubs his eyes as he looks down on himself because he feels different as he sort of gasps and smiles as he his clothes change to a white t-shirt with some with blue shoulders with a little skull pocket on his chest with blue jean shorts and some hiking boots he goes up and feel his is say his hair which doesn't isn't covered in ground gunpowder anymore he sort of like feels it around and he quickly takes out a mirror you don't know where he got a mirror but he has a mirror now he just found it in his hammer space and he looks at himself and his hair has now become a light silver as are his eyes and okay thank you the the root on mad mad lad c necklace looks like a witch's knot for anyone who knows what that is but mad wink wink wink, wink nudge nudge as mad lad then looks at red who smile it looks like he's smiling as he then goes ethereal, like he turns into his a his red body sort of turns green and goes a bit ethereal and jumps around a little bit and then goes back to being physical. He's, the Mad Lad just like smiles because this is exactly what normal Rangers companions of his type can do, and now he can do it. And Mad Lad's like, "We did it!" as he just hugs Red very tightly, and the two are just like on the ground, just hugging. Um, there is, you hug Red in this dream, and after this magic has been, uh, and after this display of magic, um, you feel that the kind of melancholy feeling to the watercolory um watercolory um feeling of the area uh-huh. just kind of lifted mm-hmm. it is easier to see it's less dreamlike um it feels a little bit more normal mm-hmm. one thing that you notice with your passive perception is that you can actually hear the train in the distance. Mad Lad smiles as he like li- looks up and just sort of like just relaxes a little bit as he just senses all this. Another thing is that your fingers sting a little bit right where you were graced mm-hmm. by the boot. Mm-hmm. And you might have a small cut with just a little bit, a few dots of blood on it. Nothing to worry. You should wash it up. Yeah. Um, Mad Lad has cure wounds, so he probably just heal himself right up. Draw me a wisdom save. Okay, wisdom save. We'll see how this plays out, boys. Okay, that's a dirty 20. Okay, I was worried for nothing. All right. I will leave this for a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me take note of your wisdom save. There you go. You are, you are growing as a ranger. 
Yes, he is. I I do I do a little dance. Um, this is it at the moment. Mm-hmm. Indeed, it is. The mad lad probably just walks out of the forest, maybe towards the train station, because that's the nearest civilization, so he can get his bearings again. It is actually relatively close. Um, as you walk out, you quickly, quickly and easily rejoin the main path. There is now people coming and going, like neighbors you recognize, maybe from near the tavern. Um, you could swear that you have seen a some of the tavern staff carrying bundles of food up and down the road and just right in front of you there is the uh the two trucks that uh, that are the two trucks that are at the station and a small uh, station just made of stone and wood not much different as any other of the houses around this around this area. Yeah, Mad Lad just sort of smiles at this as he then gets as he then looks around and just then just is like, alright, Red, let's get going home. As he climbs up on top of Red to be able to Go back home. Go back to Carmenia's farm. And it's just a matter of going up the uh, up the up the going up this this way, this dirt road. Uh, you easily just walking in a straight line. You easily easily arrive to uh, the the broken. The crossroads again. The broken. How do you? How did I call it? Uh, not totem. Uh, uh, uh. Oh my gosh! I just forgot. Uh. Dolmen. Broken dolmen. Was it? Uh, pillar. Yeah. Yeah, the pillar. Yeah, the pillar. Um, you are once again in front of the of the well. Yeah. Uh, you keep walking back to the farm. And arrive in no time, no turnarounds, mm -hmm. no, no trickery, no trickery, no hooded figures, no chestnuts up to the back of the head. Yeah, and Mella just arrives back to the farm and say, and just sort of looks around. He's just like, ah. all right, Red. We still got some chores to do, but let's just, but after that, let's just relax around the farm. What do you say? And Red just chirps happily as he agrees, as Mad Lad gets back to doing what's left of the chores at the farm, and then relaxing maybe next to the pond for the rest of the day. Does Mad Lad fall asleep? Well, let's make a con and see if he does fall asleep. It's been quite an interesting day today. Maybe the baby's tired. Maybe the baby is tired. Let's see how tired is the baby. Yeah, he is say it's right in the middle, so he doesn't fall asleep right away. But after a bit of relaxing, he does like fall a uh, gently fall into a little nap. Um you fall asleep by your own means and by your own tiredness. Nothing externally is actually affecting you in this way, but as not lad falls asleep, he has a dream. In fact, the two inhabitants of his body have a dream at the same time. Ooh. It is a strange dream in which 
the figure you saw opens up its chest and gives you the same seat you're wearing right now. And as it does this, it crumbles in a very similar fashion that it happened before. It repeats a few times and the person receiving it, it's both Alexander and Matlat, but the only person that actually keeps it, holding it, in the dream, it's Matlat. Interesting. You are, after, after these kind of repetitions that happen in a dream, You turn around and you see Alexander in front of you. Both of you connected with this golden globe. This is weird, right? Alexander, as right now he's a reflection of Mad Lad, but he's the old Mad Lad. But is a with the bicolored eyes and the old clothes while the current Mad Lab with the redesign is looking back at him. It's like, yeah, this is weird. I don't know what that thing did, but I mean, I don't feel anything bad. And I mean, this is your, this is nature stuff. This is your thing. This ain't my thing but i think something i mean something good happened in theory well i'm glad that i still got this power well i'm glad you didn't die or get cursed by that skeleton thing otherwise i said i would have said i told you so you didn't tell me anything. You didn't tell me to not be at, by it. And Alexander sort of smirks. I didn't tell, uh, say, maybe, but at the same time, it's sort of obvious you shouldn't, t you t shouldn't t touch the freaky plant skeleton. Hey! As Mad Lad just, like, glares at him, and, and Alexander just smirks. Well, it's over and done with, and you got the, you got the connection that you were looking for. Yeah. Are you okay? I'm fine. As whatever happens next, then happens next. I think that's probably a good cut off for their conversation. <laughs> um. Um. Or unless they just uh, wake up. <laughs> they. They kind of like start fading to black mm -hmm. before the dream finishes. And as everything turns to black, you just hear a voice that feels a little bit like a chestnut falling into the ground or the wind rustling through the leaves in the forest or a small creek on a trench, let's say, warm day, you hear just a little bit of extra help. And you wake up. Yeah, that's interesting to note. As Mad Lad just wakes up and looks around. And he's like, huh. Well, there's something to unpack for later. <laughs> as he goes, as he just, as he, as he just wakes up and just probably just, again, just chills for the, probably goes inside and maybe, say, depending on what time it is, maybe makes a sandwich for lunch. <laughs> and I say this is a good time to, a good point to leave it, isn't it? Yep, and that's, I was about to leave, say, that's, that's probably a good time to leave it too. <laughs> Perfect. Um, thank you very much for 
joining me into this, uh, Winona. Um, uh, th thank uh, you very much. Yeah, and thank you very much for indulging me on this. Uh, I was really excited for this. <laughs> um, and thank you, everybody, who might listen this into the future. Uh, this Everything is going somewhere, I swear. Thank you very much, and have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.